Okay. Thank you, Muba, for that warm welcome. <laughs> Even though you exaggerated, but thank you. I appreciate. All right. Everyone, good evening. So I'm going to I'm going to share my screen now. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Actually, they are hearing you, so they will actually drop this chat and I will go with the chat. So I'll be updating your eyes goes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So can you see my screen? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I can. Please, you can see the screen. Kindly be out and put it in the chat. Yeah, you can see your screen. Okay. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Once again, wherever you're joining us from, you're welcome. Right. So, today I am going to be talking about building dashboards that tell insightful stories. Right. My name is Chinon So Concord. So first off, I'd like to start with the fact that you know data visualization is one thing, but data storytelling is like taking it up a notch. So as a data analyst, it is up to us to tell stories that are insightful. Now, the importance of this cannot be overemphasized enough. You need to be a good storyteller as a data analyst. Like that one, we cannot even argue because basically you're trying to convince your audience to take certain actions based on the insights you uncover within their data. So you're trying to tell them to do something based on what you're showing them, based on what your data told you. And this is something that is very, very important. So every data analyst has to work on their data storytelling skills. So let's move on to today's agenda. So I'm going to take you through the introduction to the topic and we'll do a team check-in. Then I'll take you through my slides and we'll start with our hands-on session. So just a brief introduction. My name is Chinon So Konko again. I'm a data analyst and a Power BI developer. I'm also a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. I love teaching, so I have a YouTube channel where I talk about Sport analytics with Power BI and Power BI in general. So if sports and Power BI is something you're definitely interested in, you can check out my YouTube channel. It's non so underscore analytics. So you can check it out on YouTube. Also, I train people on Excel, Power BI and Python. And just to take it down, not to make everything serious, serious. So my hobbies are I love watching football. Like I'm a dire Chelsea fan. I love watching Korean drama yeah, and can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can. I'm reacting for that. That actually fun. People are reacting. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, uh, don't please. People should not bring what happened last. Don't bring. Don't bring the breakfast. Like, let's move on from that. Let's move on from that. So. Apart from all these topics that I've been mentioning, guys, I like reading books. I will not say I love reading books, but yeah, I do like reading books. So let's move on. So I want to like do a team check-in. So how are you feeling? Are you are, are you looking forward to this class? Like, let me know. Do you uh, are you feeling excited? How did your day go? Just use your favorite emoji or anything to show how your how you feel about the class. Are you looking forward to this? Just let so just take that for a bit one minute or two minutes let's see how that goes let's see the chat so how are you feeling? Use your favorite emojis. I want to see those emojis. Like, how are you feeling about the class? Are you curious? Are you excited? You can use words as well. Anything. Okay. 
Okay, I'm saying from Lainka, Zainab. Keep it coming, guys. In just a minute, we're going to start. This is data storytelling we're talking about. So this is very, very important. So guys, I want to see you guys excited and interested in learning about this thing. Do you get, like, this is one thing that is going to take your data visualization to another level. This is one thing that you need as a data analyst, guys. Okay. <laughs> I see from Emmanuel. Yes, I'm seeing from Blessing. I can see you as well. Sulia, I cannot see Sulia. So there is my organ in this class. So in case, in case ah. they are going and someone is correcting you, is that Sulia? Sulia is the boss in this class. And okay. she's not even yes. showing me. So let that just remember that name, Sulia. Sulia, I want to see you. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I think our two minutes time should be up because we started about 7-11 and it's 7-13 now. So let's move on, guys. It's like Slias is hiding from us, so <laughs> let's move on, guys. So moving on, let me go back to my slides, please. Okay. So Muba, can you please confirm that I can see my screen? Yes, I can, I can. All right, all right, so moving on. So let's start with dashboards first, because you can remember our topic for today is building dashboards that tell insightful stories. So let's start with dashboard now. So what is a dashboard? The Power BI dashboard is a single page report that tells a story through visualizations. Now, one thing you pick here, one thing you should pick here from this is story and visualizations. So you're telling a story through what visualizations. And I think we might have access to what visualizations is, which is like when you talk about using your visuals, like your bar chart and your pie chart, that is where you start talking about visualizations. So I'm not going to delve into this really, but as we go on, it will come along. So let's move to the next. What is a story now? A story is the telling of an event, either true or fictional in such a way that the listener ends something just by the fact that he or she heard the story. Now, a story is a means of transferring information or point of view. So I want to pass an information to you. What do I use to do that? I use a story. Now, every story has a teller and a listener. Who is the teller for us now? If I'm trying to bring this from the general case, I'm bringing it into the data analyst space now. Who is the teller? a data analyst, and who is the listener, our audience? It could be a stakeholder at a particular company, an executive, it could be a product manager. That is your audience, that is your listener, that is who you're telling your stories to. So every story should have a teller and a listener. So let's move on. Now, what makes a story insightful? An insightful story leverages data, which is then contextualized and finally presented to the audience. So it utilizes not only data analysis and data visualization, but contextual analysis and presentation. Now, let me bring out two words from this, contest and presentation. So this is one thing that I think we keep hammering on when we come to storytelling with data and data analysis. We keep talking about contest. Amidst data analysis, data visualization, we still keep talking about context. So, bringing in the context, bringing context into the story you're talking about is one thing that is very important. And as we go on, you understand what I even mean by this context that people talk about. Like, is there even context in your data? Is it just how do you provide context within the numbers? Within numbers, what context can I take from this? So, you need to provide like you're providing your data, you need to, your audience to see like the bigger picture in everything. Now, I'll start with this. Why should we tell insightful stories as a data analyst now? Why do you want to tell insightful stories? Why does this even matter? Number one, it allows the narrator to put the data into context of a broader perspective 
and use tools such as visual aids to help break down the results. So you're trying to communicate. You don't want to communicate in a complex way. Not every, like, you don't want to be giving people, people don't even like mathematics in the first place. You don't want to be making things hard for people to even understand your report. That like they're trying to understand how to even read your report before they are able to gain the insight from your report. Because I'm very sure they would move on. If I stare at the dashboard and it takes me too long, or let's say the colors in the dashboard are too much for me, like I can't, like it's not, there's not enough contrast in that dashboard, or the insight that is being presented, I don't even understand how it's organized. There is no like order to it. There is no alignment. There is nothing of that sort in it. I would just, like I have one, I have a lot of things to do than to be focused on something like that. So I would just move on. Like you're not going to even capture my attention. So you need to use visual aids to break down that result to your audience, to draw your audience to what you want them to see, regardless of their background. Even if they are into the data world, let them still be interested. Even if they are not into the data world, let them still be interested in what you have, in the solution you've made. See, there's one thing I've learned throughout last week and this week is that communication is key. Anything you're doing, data analysis, data science, anything, communication is key. Be able to communicate the solution, the insights that you're providing. That even somebody that is not technical will understand that, ah, this person has value. Oh, this person has something to offer. Oh, from this, their project, I can see what they are solving. Even if it's one thing that they take, that they remember, let it be. Regardless of their background, domain expertise, or technical sophistication, they can easily understand this data. They can easily understand the story and the implications the implications if they do not adhere to your recommendations. Now, why should we also tell insightful stories as a data analyst now? Because stories are engaging. Stories are informative and persuasive. Let's talk about this now. Now, if there's one thing everybody likes listening to, even growing up as a child, you see, you want to teach children things, you see storybooks every time. Because these are the things that interest kids. And even nowadays, you still see people People interested in reading like comic books or things like that. People want things that engage them. They're trying to get information from it, but they still want something that's interesting to them that they find engaging. So make your stories engaging. Make your stories informative. So how is how is how are you passing insightful information if there is no information to begin with in your dashboard? So at the end of it, your story should also be able to persuade them, persuade them to take certain actions that if you do not do this. This could happen. So this is where we talk about like forecasting. You can also bring forecasting into your data visualization story. Like in years to come, this is what we expect would happen. So you might need to do this or based on historical data, this is what we can tell. Also again, why should we tell insightful stories as a data analyst? This is where I bring it for you, set yourself apart. Now, I think there is this notion which I'm not going to like correct or discorrect or something that like the data analyst world is saturated. There are lots of data analysts right out there. The job market is saturated, right? Any industry, the job market is saturated, or maybe the data analyst world more. But not everybody is proficient. Not everybody. A lot, a lot of people can be able to do data analysis and data visualizations, which are not easy to be, to be fair with. But to talk about crafting the story, talk about selecting, not just using any visual, selecting the right charts, not just selecting the right charts, being able to focus the attention on a particular thing you want your audience to focus on. Not everyone thinks about that. Storytelling is one key that you can set yourself apart, that value you offer. You need me on your team. I'm very good in data analysis, data visualization. I'm going to be able to communicate the insights. You provide your data to me, I will clean it for you, model the data, and I'll be able to provide that insights for you in a way that you won't be interested in knowing. I know you're interested in helping your business, but if you take a chance on me, the way I will tell your story, the way I'm going to present your story to you will be interesting to you. So a lot of data analysts, like I said, and visualize data. And one thing about storytelling with data is like it does not come easy. Even everybody, we are still learning. It's kind of like a practice makes perfect, right? You keep on like iterating. So we all kind of struggle with telling stories because not everybody has a creative side. Like you might even think you have a creative side, and then later you will just be at the block. You don't even know what colors to use. You don't even know what to do. You don't even know the team to use in your report. 
So let's move on. Let's move on. So before I move on to the next slide, I still need to bring your head to what we are discussing about building dashboards that tell insightful stories now. So you can see here a visual now. Let me hint about what I said, context. Now, context is you providing, apart from what I see, how can I compare this to something? How does this matter to me? In this visual you're seeing here, this is a card visual, by the way. You can see the total revenue, which is the title. You can see the number, which is 1.27 million. And you can see the currency sign, which is a dollar sign. So these are kind of like the three things you can see on this. And I would assume, or for the sake of this presentation, I'm trying to let you know that this card visual is part of a dashboard. So the dashboard definitely has a title. So the title, let's say our, our title is sales, um, let's just call it sales analysis for 20, 2018, let's say 2018, 2023, right? So there is a year, which is a context in itself. So you talking about the year you're analyzing is you providing context also. So that is part of context. So coming back to this, now you've provided the title on another context. You provided the numbers and the sign. So imagine if I provide you this with just total revenue, 1.27 million with no dollar sign. You know you earned 1.27 million, but you don't know if it's like dollars or naira. Are you comparing 1.27 million naira with dollars? Are you comparing those values? Imagine if somebody else is interpreting this to be Naira. They would think, oh, 1.7 million, I made this. Yeah, it's not such a big, it's not, it's not such a big amount. It's just 1.7 million Naira for my business. It's not big because you're not providing them that context that is in dollars. So I see this thing in some dashboards where people don't put the dollar sign, the Naira sign or something. Don't put this thing to let people know. So this is one content that should be included in this. Now, is this can this dashboard still be refined to provide more context? Definitely, you can still provide more context. Now, everything depends on you, the data analyst. So in this thing called data analysis, right? There is no, let me put it, there's no hard and fast rule. There are some rules you need to follow, but there is also no hard and fast rule about it. Everything depends on your audience. So yes, you have situations where you're working on a project and you have a lot of visualizations and you're like, oh, I want to show this thing. I want to show this thing, but it's like there's a lot of information. Then you now start deciding that ah, I'll have to remove this because this thing does not fit into my story. You can have something that fits into one story, but does not fit into the other story. Something that is for your product manager and something that is for the executive. So every data has its own story that is telling. Now back to what we are discussing, which is our context right here. How can we provide more context? Now I know I made $1.27 million in revenue. Now, how does this, I made $1.27 million. How does this matter? Did I make, is this a big amount of money? How do I tell exactly? I know $1.27 million is big, but how big is this? How does this matter to me in my business? How does this prove to me that, in the year 2018, which I which if you can recall, I said the title of it is indicating that that analysis is for 2018, right? So how does this affect me? How does this like get to me? What emotions is this thing meant to evoke in me? Like I'm I'm telling you 1.7 million dollars, right? In 2018. So does that really mean I'm doing well in my business? Or what does that mean exactly? What context are you providing for me? Let's go on to the next slide. This. So once you see this, what do you see? You see months over months and year over year. So now let me take it because I'm going to try to break it down. I don't know how far we've all progressed. I think we're all learning because we always need to like relearn things. So I'm just going to take it. So months over months. Now, months over months is a metric where you use to calculate how well you're doing in your business monthly basis as a percentage. So I'm going to give you an instance, right? I own a business. I made $100 match, right? Then April, I made $200. So without the $100, 
right? And I'm telling somebody that I made two hundred dollars in April. So the person doesn't have a context. But if I tell that person that I made about a hundred percent increase, that is that context. Like hundred percent increase from last month. That is the context you're telling the person. So that was month over month is doing. So I had hundred dollars for March. 200 for April. So month over month is going to do a calculation. So this is like a DAX and we're going to come to DAX. So this is going to be like 200 minus 100 all divided by 200. Sorry, all divided by 100 rather. So it's 200 minus 100 all divided by previous, which is 100. That's going to give you 100 over 100, which is 1 multiplied by 100 percent, which will give you 100 percent. I'll take that again. So let's say I have for March and I have for April. March, I made $100. April, I made $200. So what is my month over month? The difference in percentage. So the difference is going to be April, which is 200, minus March, which is 100, divided by that of March, which is 100. So you have 100 over 100, which will cancel out to give you one, and then you multiply that with 100%, and that's 100% increase. So one thing you see here now, so the same way month over month applies, the same way year over year applies. Now, there is always a context within this thing. So based on your filter, you get the month over month. So if your filter is on particular, if your filter, if your filter context is in April, what is going to be using to calculate your month over month will be March. If you're using November, it's going to take it back the month before November. So year over year is still the same thing, similar to month over month. Year over year will also take it a year back. So let's say I'm dealing with 2018 here. So it's going to calculate based on 2017. So now I'm providing context. So this one point to $27 million, what do you think about this? That is looking like it's a big money now. I'm seeing that the month over month, based on my context, based on my filter, is showing me that I have negative. So I definitely did better in my context in the previous than the previous year than that year I'm calculating. So you see how context changes things. I don't know if um, maybe you can drop in the chat if you're following. Please just drop in the chat if you're following or need to take things back a bit. They are following. I can see some reaction here. They are following. Okay, so I think. Okay, can you hear me well? If you can't hear me well, please just let me know in chat. Because I think I'm seeing something saying they can't. When? Okay, they can hear you. They can hear you. And then. Um, are they doing okay? I will, I will respond to them. Okay, I think someone is asking. Okay. 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 Cool. So let's go back. I just wanted to confirm that. Okay, okay. So let's go back. So now this was where we started from, and this is where we are now. See how we've provided a bit of context. So while I'm not saying this is all bad because you're providing context, everything depends on how far you want them to see. Everything depends on the story you're telling. There is no hard and fast rule. So now I'll take you to the next slide. Colors. So you see how with this color immediately your attention is grabbed by it because number one, by using red. And then because red implies what danger, you, you automatically feel like oh, you want to see red, and red is kind of a bright color. Though there are some visualization rules where you have to provide accessibility, and red, some people really don't like they have color issues with red. Right, but all of this still depends on your audience, right? So now you see how adding this icon, this red, can also show that we are declining. If it was green, you can see a progress. Let's move on. So you can see how the data story, how you can still work on something to evolve it from this to this and back here. Now let's continue. Now, how do we tell insightful stories? Now you're seeing an example of an insightful story. You want to know how do we tell an insightful story? So you start with identifying your audience. 
it's really important. And I think if you're working on a personal project, you can always decide to pick out who your audience is based on how you want your project to go. But if you're working on something like a challenge, like maybe um, Maven's analytics or enterprise DNA, their challenges, if you're working on it, you have to focus on their, what I call it, what I call it like their brief. Yes, like their brief. You need to focus on their brief to identify your audience because it's a challenge, like a competition, right? So you need to identify your audience in every case because that is what is going to, that's like a criteria in, in even their challenges. Who are you? Like you can present a good report, a good report that should even get you far, but you are not following the brief. You are not positioning your data for a specific audience that was required. So you need to identify your audience in this case. Now, what do I mean by this? You have your technical audience or non-technical audience. If you're working on something that you want a lot of people to see, and it's in, and it's in, and it's in something like let's say sports and entertainment, you can't go the regular way. You know your audience are people that are into sports and entertainment. And they don't want anything boring. They want things that are going to catch their eyes but still they will still be able to understand because they don't understand technical things very well. So, so often you see football matches where people do like a plot of how the football progresses and you see them using what, you see them using like football chat because that is what the fans are going to understand because that is one thing that links it to football. Now let's come to, let's come to like the business world, right? The business world, so you need to understand who your audience is. Are you reporting to the executive of the company? Are you reporting to your team manager? Like, what exactly are you reporting to? And you need to know which questions do they want you to answer? Which questions are they interested in? So that is part of identifying your audience and identifying the objective, what they want. So once you identify your audience, in turn, you're also identifying what they want from you. So if you see like an executive report, for instance, they are asking you for like KPIs. The executive really like to see those KPIs. They want to see how the sales is declining or increasing month over month, year over year. They want to see year to date revenue got in. They want to see those kind of metrics. They want to see the churn rates. They want to see um, customer lifetime value. They want to see all these metrics pertaining to the business case now. So identifying your audience is key. So once you identify your audience, you, wonder, you also identify what they want. What is the objective for that data? Now, once you know the objective, the, the next is to determine what data matters. So imagine if you, you are dealing with product, um, let's say you're dealing with like a uh, product performance or something relating to product performance, right? You're not going to need to deal with employee. Like you're not going to deal with employee information. So that data does not matter to you. So it's going to help you because see, when you start working with projects, when you start working with some data, it's going to be overwhelming. Some data are quite bulky, that's going to be overwhelming. That at the instance, you need to know where you are focusing on based on your story in a way. So you're kind of like reducing your all I call it, reducing your headache, basically. Reducing, like reducing that pressure that that data is bringing to your head. Um, or I don't even know how to put it again. So you need to determine what data matters, like and focus on that data. So from that data, you could create. This is where you have like you have let's say you have one huge flat table, and then you're breaking things down into different tables that you're going to model into Power BI. Yeah. So you're breaking down one big other table into like um let's say products, um, other details, shipping information, inventory. You just breaking it down. Then the next thing to do is to what is to construct a compelling narrative. So this constructing a compelling narrative now is okay. Um, when you define it, what this constructing a compelling narrative, right, is also joined with identifying the most effective data visualizations. So you're once you're trying to construct a story or a narrative, you need your visuals. This is where you think about what charts to use. And I'll admit it to you that sometimes you still need to think. It's not like once you're working on a project that it does not come easy sometimes to say, ah, this chart. Sometimes this chart can do it, but another chart might be able to tell that story better. 
like another child might be able to tell that story better. When I see when I see about gender gap, immediately what I think about is this. Oh God, I wish I had included this in this slide. I see this like dumbbell like charts. This chart where it shows like a gap. I don't know. Maybe in the next tomorrow, I will just show you what that is. But when I think about gender gap, I think that chart would be able to show, be able to tell that story better for anybody that wants to understand it, even better than a bar chart would. So you need to identify the most effective data visualization that will tell that story. And this is where you also start with understanding your data. So you determine what data matters, you clean your data, and then you start with exploratory analysis. So it's always exploratory analysis first. You don't you don't have a story first until you explore that data. If you don't check, if you don't um, start putting charts together to see how things, to see what is happening, you don't know what you want to say, you don't know what you want to tell in that data yet. So you start with just creating charts and trying to figure out, okay, what do I think is happening? So this is a bit of like your sense now, and you can also, chat GPT is also helpful. You can also search about like, what questions can you ask from your data? You can start from the basic questions and move on. So this is where you start asking questions from your data. To see, so it's kind of like you putting an hypothesis and seeing if it is true, and if it is not true, you move on to the next. Then let's move on to, you identify the most effective, yes, let's talk about this effective data visualization because this is also something that, this is something that would affect your story. If you are not using the right visualization, this is, I will not call it a, a deal breaker, but it is a deal breaker in any way. Try to deal breaker, right? So you need to know what charts you're using. When are you using a bar chart? When are you using a scatter chart? When are you using a line chart? I I feel like you might you might assume that everybody knows how when they use what charts, but not everybody. This thing takes um time and practice before you know, oh, you're not meant to do this, or oh, you're not. And one thing I also advise you to do is why I said I I like books, but I don't love books, is because books are actually helpful. That's why I said I like books, because if you don't read books, you don't see how people do things. You don't see how you should learn from them and incorporate that same thing. So you can learn from books. You can learn from videos about the effective data visualizations you need. You can learn about the right chart. Let's start, for instance, your line chart. When you use line charts, when you want to show trends over the years. So there is also some times when you want to show trends over the years. You don't necessarily have to use a line chart. You can use a bar chart as well. A bar chart can also work in some cases. I see that. I see some experts using that. And I look at it and I see that, oh, it tells the story. So I don't think this is like something you say, ah, okay, they're breaking rules or something like it's wrong. So when people are like saying, oh, something can also be done, you look at it and see it works, it's fine. So that's okay. But when you see other things like pie charts now, when you're using pie charts, or oh, oh, let me bring it. Pie charts actually even better. You use pie charts sometimes. When you talk about 3D charts, 3D charts are not going to help you, except you want to do like infographics or something that is like, you know, your audience is different. You know, your audience is very different. I don't even know how that would fit into place, but I think I might have seen a 3D chart used once. I didn't particularly find it wrong. I didn't particularly find it like, like okay, no, 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 no way. But then let me just put it here. Let me not even bring 3D. Don't consider a 3D chart. Do not consider a 3D chart. If you use a 3D chart, <clears throat> hey, don't just don't use a 3D chart. That is one, one of the like people that you want them to look at your stories. This data analysis expert that you want them to look at your work. This real they want them to look at this thing. Once they see the 3D chart, I don't think they will even look at you. Might have something very interesting in your insights. So but once they see that 3D chart, it will be as if ah what did this person do now? How did this person make this mistake? Like this is like part of the beginning. You need to know your chart type. So you should not do that. So then you need to know about which chart you're using. Then once you have done your exploration analysis, this is where you can start providing context to your story. Context in the sense of context and also visual aids, colors. So this is something mentioned a lot. So from the woman that wrote the storytelling with data book, which she's very, very like one of the persons I like respect, and I think she's doing an impressive work. 
in a storytelling with data, but one thing she mentioned is like pushing everything to the background and then they push what you want to focus on. So this means that like, uh, you're working on a batch of pro um, products, top, uh, let's say top five products by revenue, or products generating the most revenue, right? You have your product on the y-axis and your revenue on, let's say, the x-axis. You're using like an horizontal bar chart now. So the first thing you might want to do is like just gray out the colors. Everything is gray. And then you now decide, let's say you're ranking it in descending order. That is also a story. Okay, writing contest. Now you're ranking Imagine if that data was not ranked. What, where do you put the They're giving them extra work. So ranking that data is already something on its own. Then they are picking the first, the first on the list. Also, one thing, one rule of thumb that I've learned is like try to be consistent. So if you rank something descending to um descending to like descending, right? In descending order, you might want to keep that order in your report instead of like twisting it again to ascending order, which would be a bit confusing, right? So why I was saying this is like I started with about the context, right? The context and the colors. So you use colors to point attention. Like you can see that revenue chart I show you where you saw that color. You saw what color did to it. You provide context, but you see how color, like we we love, we love fancy things. That's just it. We just want to see it. But then too fancy, too fancy can also be bad. When you use too many colors, then everything is just like, ah. You've messed it up. You've gone and like too fancy can also be bad. So then we we'll talk about after you provided the context to your story, the why, the how did this start? How did this start? Okay, people are not paying their taxes, right? Why are people not paying their taxes? Because then you find out that because people are not satisfied with the services they receive from the government, then you check are people actually um the, are the services what what are people saying about the services they receive from the government which services are they most dissatisfied with then okay these are the two services that is actually affecting people uh, like 90 percent of people do not like this service this might be what is contributing to them not paying their tax then you now provide like a recommendation so this is like you structuring your story people don't pay tax why do people don't pay why why don't people pay tax because of this, or is it because they don't know the tax they are meant to pay? Is it because they know if they don't pay their tax, they can get away with it? Is it because, or just start asking questions in that kind of like in a, in in a like in a flow, like structured? It definitely doesn't have to come like that, right? Just like slow in at first, and then later you structure your story. So this is why I added the last line, which is like edit until the story is clear and concise. You can never have your story perfect. You can keep editing. You can keep. And the worst part is sometimes like I've also been stuck on this where because I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes like you work on something and you be like, oh, you have to remove this. or Oh, you don't even know if you should remove this. So editing the story until you know it's serving a particular purpose for the audience. There might be some juicy things you want to say in that data that is not relating to your objective. So, uh, like in your data, you can find a lot of information in that data, or like even the one page that people are showing for dashboards, that's not only the data and information, but that is the data that will suit their objective, the story that yeah, they're telling. So, let's move on. So, I'd like you to confirm if I move on now, because I think I've been speaking for a while. So, I want to know if you can still hear me. So, if you, if you can still hear me, just let me know in the chat. Yeah, they okay. Yes, Damilola. Oh, and good. Good. Yes, Damilola. It can be increased or decreased depending on the data set. Where you are not, where you are not okay. Prepared, I was like, ah, guys. Actually, guys, once it's, it's, we it's, actually it's, have ten minutes. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. I okay. think you can hear me. Going back yeah, to the slides. Can. Going back. All right. So now, what, what are the five things you should do in every data story? Now, these are like some five tips. Provide context. That's the most important thing. I feel like we have been talking about context, 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 context. Even context will already be tired. Like, would you leave me alone for a minute? But like, it's not happening anytime soon. So providing context is very important. 
choosing the appropriate visual also it's a do or die thing. You have to choose the appropriate visual. Also, while you're choosing the appropriate visual, you have to make sure. So this is one thing I don't think a lot of people know. Some categories have like inherent ordering. Like for instance, your month, January, February, March, it should come that way. But some other categories, like let's say we're talking about, let me see, let me see, food items, rice, beans, there's no, there's no order in it. So you don't need to be worried about, once you have those kind of visuals, you don't need to order them in any way. You can just order those kind of visuals, which is visuals about those products in the descending order of maybe the revenue is selling, the units is selling, or any other metrics. But for something like months, I don't want to see you having October, then you're having January, then you're having, I will not even, like, it's not flowing because our brain is already, like, wired to see January, February, like a flow, like a series. So something like that, order it like that. Also, once it comes to something age group, you have age group, you are grouping your age, 18 to 21. Um, Let me see again, let me see again. 18 to 21, 22 to let's say 30, 31 to 50. This thing should also be ordered in that same order. They have inherent ordering. Don't rank it, even as much as it can also provide, um, you might want to show like, you want to order it in terms of like, let's say, okay, let me calm down. Let's say I want to show the age group that is bringing the most revenue because a business might be interested in knowing which age group is bringing the most revenue for them. So that they will know how they will target it. Are we targeting Gen Z? Does it look like this percentage of people are the ones interested in our products? They might want to know information like that, right? So let's say you have your age group now, 18 to 21, 21, 22 to 30 now. And you are like, okay, I want to um I want to sort it in descending order so that they can see the age group that's bringing them the most revenue. And then you start to maybe let's say it's 30 that is bringing 30 to 30. Then I see 16 to 20. Then I see 50 to 56. It's disordered. Even though you want to show them that age group that is bringing the most revenue, you can still order it in that same inherent ordering 18 or let's say 16 to 20, 20 to 25, uh, 26 to 30. And then you use color to highlight the one that is bringing the most revenue and you push the others to the background. What I mean by push the others to the background, you use gray colors or lighter colors for the others and then the one that is bringing the most revenue you make it so the first thing a person is going to see is the one that is bringing the most revenue and then they can now see the bigger picture of the others that are also generating revenue so that's about you that's also choosing the appropriate visual in a way that's formatting your visual that is how you're like crafting the story so it's not like you've selected a chart finish that, is, that you have put your data finish that's not where everything ends then the next, eliminating clutter. So at the end of it, you have your legends, you have your active titles. Sometimes your, your, the title of your chart is already pretty descriptive. You don't need to add, like, if there is too much, if there is too much information, people can't, people are overwhelmed. People are really overwhelmed. People don't like to do things that are stressful. So if you see something like, imagine you see, okay, mm -hmm, let me use an example. Online, you see people tweet, a certain long episode and people are like, ah, somebody should read and explain it for us. So, ah, me, I'm not, it's the people that read this one for me. Nobody wants to read it. So that's the same thing when it comes to visualizations to eliminate anything you can, eliminate clutter. So your white active labels, if the title is already descriptive enough, you can remove it. Also, those colors I mentioned, you can push them to the background and then focus attention. Focus attention on what you want people to look at. You can also focus attention using font size. So I'm writing a text now, and suddenly I'm using font size. Let's say I'm using font size 12, and then suddenly you see a word that is big. If somebody's reading this thing, you'll see the first, you see the big words first before you even see, before you go back and read all those small words. So you can also focus attention with color, with size which is your font size. And then the last one is think like a designer. 
think like a designer. So we're not all designers. And I know people will feel like, oh, dashboard is not about designing or something. But if you check on LinkedIn and look at the experts that are telling this story in data, they're telling insightful stories. They're telling stories that matter to their business. So And their dashboards look clean. So even if you, that you're saying, oh, you're telling a very insightful story too, and your dashboard is not looking um, clean, it's not looking convincing for, for your stakeholders, it's not looking engaging, I feel like you're just doing yourself. It's okay, but it's like in the job interview, we don't know how things would work. Also, use color wisely. Like me, I will try as much as possible to limit the use of color I use. Like I will try to go the same route, the same route mostly. Like, so you can also make use of color palettes. You can check online and look at which colors. Also, one thing I want to mention also is like brand colors. So if they are brand colors, make sure you use you don't have to make sure you use brand colors, but it would be nice to use the brand colors. But if you're using other colors, make sure they complement the brand colors. Make sure it does not like distract. Now, when I'm talking about brand colors, you might be wondering, maybe you don't have a, you're not working yet, you don't have a job yet, but I say. So one thing I noticed also is, I don't know if anybody which knows about Ahmed, Ahmed Oyelo, which is like a data visualization expert, a Power BI expert, Microsoft value professional. So he has a course which is Power BI developer course, like a, an internship course. And in that course, if you check it out, if you have learned this data and you want to go on a project, take that course. Because that course is kind of, it's crafted as if you're in the real world situation. It's going to present with you, it presented like an icon, which is like, 4G, which is the brand logo or something. So you're not going to get that brand logo. What I do if I want to work on that project now is to take that brand logo, 4G, and go to Adobe Colors um, and realize I should have included this in this slide as well. Okay, tomorrow I will drop some link. So if you go to Adobe Colors now, you just put that image there and it will extract colors for, for you. It will extract the color codes and you can put those color codes when, once you're creating your report. So that's one thing. And the, the way that project is structured, like Ahmed really did a very good job. Like I'm just like for, for free, like for free, that amount of information, that amount of like knowledge, that amount of like project to work on, like it's impressive. So, amount of project, projects <laughs> is impressive, impressive. Like it's a view, like it's a view world project, real world project. Like, able to cover that project and, as in, you are a part of your developer already. You, like, do you care? <laughs> it's 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 like, like, amazing. Like but I feel like so. it doesn't even, it doesn't even, like, talk about, like, hype himself, you know, for the things. Like, yes. if you see the content, go to, go to Foresight, Foresight BI, check their page, Foresight check the BI, page. Foresight, let me, let me drop the link so they can go to it. If you check, check it. So, for those of you that are not here, and it's I made free. the lower is by mentor. I so my mentor. So you, if you are saying okay, who is this? So I'm gonna do my mentor. So I like, see for site bi dot n dot com dot ng. Yeah. So you like can check the, really, You will yeah, see have, you will see some calls the visualization calls the power bi projects so, so take take everything. Go to it after the class, after the program. Yes. You learn more about visualization. Yes. You learn more about Power BI very well. Exactly. Because Power BI, learning Power BI is almost like a lifelong journey. But don't be afraid. Just keep <laughs> learning. Just keep learning. Because <laughs> then Power BI is wide. You see Power Query, you see wide. DAX, you see Power BI, power is, BI wide. is wide. But don't be afraid. That's why it's, like, it's just... development on its own. Just go. As you just start like this, before you know. Just keep moving, just keep moving. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. So I have here an insightful read, and I'll tell you what I think makes it insightful and what I think can be done to make it better. Right. So now, one thing you can see in this chart is the use of colors. You can see some, the colors were grayed out. And the others, the colors were quite like quite dark. Let's use that. And you can see a title. The title telling you what reading women football club shorts and Chelsea football club women shorts. And you can also see something that this chart tries to do. Chelsea is known synonymously with what color? 
blue. Like when you think of Chelsea, we are the blues, obviously. So try to bring it that, try to bring that thing in. So if you're creating like a business report and you're creating profit and loss, you want to use color that signifies a good thing. You want to use green or blue. And then once you're doing something that signifies loss, you want to use red or maybe orange towards that same color range. So those are some things you should think about. Now, this bit now is talking about shots. So you can see the shots that we're taking. So each of these, so now, but this bit doesn't clearly explain to you that all of this means shots. It doesn't. But if this visualization is for a live presentation, it will work. But if this is like a, this is something people are just going to see, it will not work because people would not really understand this so much if you don't provide context. You might need to add some little words to help them know. Like, for instance, now, what exactly happened in this match? Three, one. Three goals because one, two, three, and one. But not everybody will really, will really think it. Some of us might get it, some might not get it. So if this is a live presentation, I'm presenting this like I'm doing now, you can tell that it's three, one, and these were the other shots that they tried, but they were not converted into goal. And then you can see also what this data is providing context also into who scored these goals. You can see Bethany England. You can see Erin Cotsbeth. You can see Farah Williams here. So this thing is providing context into who actually scored these goals. And this was done in Power BI. This shot was plotted in Power BI using the integration of Python in Power BI. So this is an example of like, so everything you do, Sometimes you go back and look at your projects and see that ah, there's something I could have done better. I could have improved this. So sometimes you will see there's something I want to do more in this. So projects are also kind of iterative in a way. Also, you can see your growth as you work on more projects. So don't be afraid if your data storytelling skills does not start out well. Don't be afraid or don't feel like, ah, I don't have it in me. Or more. Continue and do it and do it again. So when I when like when I was in secondary school, drawing did not come naturally to me. I could not draw. Like it was not. I'm not an hard person per se. But if I had, if but I'm a very competitive person in the sense that if you give me something, I will still try. I want to do something. So I started out with learning how to trace. If you give me drawing, I can't find something. I will trace it and give you. Maybe you will learn that ah, this girl has traced this thing. You know, I traced it. So. When you start out, you might not get it. You might, it might not be easy in visualizations and everything, but be able to like grow. You start with something, you see, oh, so at least I know that I cannot do this thing I was doing before then again. I cannot be making mistakes that I'm not ordering my charts well. I cannot be making mistakes that I'm using this wrong chart. I cannot be making mistakes that I'm not aligning my chart. So that's one important thing to, to alignment of charts. So you need to align. When, once we work on dashboards, you see what, once we work on the answer, you see what that means exactly. So some of these things I mentioned, they are really, really important though, because um, I don't know if some people like want to, if they're on Twitter, they're sharing their works online and they want people to review them and like it. So if I see a book I really like, I would retweet it, I would like it, I would do like, I would comment on it. If I see a work that I know, oh, this person really tried, put your report, I would go and read your report and be like, I'm learning, everybody is learning. You might not know, you put your reports there, I'll go and read your reports, you might not know I'm even learning from you, right? I remember I was working on one project, a Power Query, um, a project that I involved replacing values, right? Replacing values, doing a recent challenge that I went on. Then I now thought about the fact that, ah, Muba had really something in Power Query about like reducing like steps in Power Query or something. I went to go and search. So some things you work on, people are also learning from them. So you, so as you're distant, so just be dropping your stuff, just be working, create something. Let me be sure, you don't need to create a full dashboard sometimes. You can create something small and start from there, telling a story with your data. So let's move on, okay? So what I want to do is I want to put forward, let's make this very interactive. I want to put forth some exercises now and you provide me with some answers. So that's what I want to do now. So. Uh, ask you some questions and you let me know what you think and then I'll provide some solutions. So let's let's make this work, guys. So for the first question, what do you think is the primary purpose of a dashboard? Is it to 
explore raw insights, raw data rather. Is it to explore raw data, to present insights and trends, or to showcase your coding skills? Find you dope. Okay, wow, wow, wow. So the yeah, I already know. Boss, boss is there. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of B, 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 B. Okay. Okay. That's correct. To present insights and trends. Can you notice the, the first data. answer? Can you notice yes. The first answer. I want you to notice that first answer. The name. I I want. I can't hear. Can you come again? I say the first answer. I want you to check the name. Oh oh oh. Okay. Are we doing faster, singer? Eh, eh. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I just want you to go to that person. That person <laughs> okay. is your guy, your guy in the okay. class. Wait, wait, wait. I'm seeing a daughter. Is that your sister, Mba? Or a family member? No, no, my sister. <laughs> no, my sister. No, my sister. My sister. I, Why that guys have I the same see. surname? So you are talk um, Just like... Or, I know you have been just like, just like Malcolm and you two. I'm seeing that too. You guys. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I get Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, at least everybody got this question right. Everybody understands that raw data doesn't really matter that much if you're not presenting insights and trends. Okay, no coding skills to showcase here. Let's go on. So when designing a dashboard, what is the significance of audience analysis? So it's unnecessary. Our dashboards are for everyone. It helps tailor content and visualizations to audience needs. It only matters for non-technical viewers. So let me hear you what you think. Let me, what are we thinking? So we're in the next question now. Okay, I'm seeing B. I just give like, let me give one minute so other people can drop the answers. Let's go, let's go. Okay, B. Okay, nice. Let me see. Okay, okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. I think you guys got that. Okay, now let's say this. Which best describes the data to ink ratio concepts in dashboard design? Now. Using a lot of colors to make data stand out. Maximizing the amount of ink used to print a dashboard. Removing unnecessary ink to highlight data and reduce clutter. So for the third question, what do we think? People will not even wait for me to read this question or finish. We're already writing CC. <laughs> That's amazing. Ah. No, you know, they are seeing your screen. They are seeing this. Malcolm, seeing this Malcolm screen. is. I see the ah, Malcolm, Malcolm is there. Welcome, Malcolm, welcome. welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome. It's crazy. There's always that student that wants to stand out. That is Malcolm. <laughs> okay, I see a question here. Please, can you explain the data to increase? So, so this is about the clutter that I mentioned. So you want to reduce the amount of color you're using. You don't need you don't need colors too much. You need to reduce the amount of words you have in your dashboard sometimes you need words right to explain certain things but try as much as possible not to use lengthy words sometimes in your dashboards just don't just don't make it too much that everything becomes cluttered that's the word so if you think something is unnecessary remove it or if you're even thinking does this thing even i would feel like if you are thinking about it too much then maybe it's even unnecessary so this is a concept that we talk about in the dashboard design, data increase show, just talking about. So I think that covers it. Wait, 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 where was I? Going to the wrong chat. Okay, okay. Wait, speaking B, which question are we in? Which question are we in? Let's see B. 
maximizing the amount. Okay, no, no, no. You don't want to. You don't want to. This is not even. You're not using colors to print dashboard. This, this will not really work. You want to remove unnecessary ink. So when you remove unnecessary ink, you highlight the data. So you have a lot of um, charts highlighted. You remove some, then you are highlighting some. And then the, um, you're reducing clutter, removing the rags, these titles, and the rest. So let's move on to the next question. If there is one, yes. Now, what is the role of two tips in an interactive dashboard? Now, this is not something I mentioned, right? But I want to see what you think. I did not talk about two tips, but I want to see what you think because I'll still talk about two tips, but that's for tomorrow. They want to put that when they're building our dashboard. So I want to know what is the role of two tips in interactive dashboards? Two tips are only useful for designers to provide additional context or details when users over over data points or two tips slow down dashboard performance. Let me know what you think. Is it A, B, or C? Okay, I see B. Let's let me go. Let me go. B, we see B. We see B, we see B. <laughs> Muba, I'm going to throw you out. Like I will throw you out. Stand this stand stand one, please. <laughs> let me know where you're standing. You're on the fence, you're over the fence, you're inside. Uh -uh. Let me know where you're standing. Be cool. So we see B strong. I see I Okay. okay, nice. Let's go back to that. Let's talk about that. So two tips are B, right? People are picking B to provide exactly is to provide additional context or details. I feel like some of you might have picked this thing because you saw context too. This one I've been saying contest, contest. People will just go and decide to pick us of contest <laughs> because if I'm the one. And I'm guessing for an exam, I see context, I'll be context. So let's get back into it. So two tips here are used in interactive dashboards to provide additional data points. So I used two tips recently, but I did not really use it. I'll say it was minimalistic in that project because what I used this for was I was showing the percentage. I was showing the percentage. Uh, let's say I was showing Presented like 50 60 percent. I was using like a bar chart. Yes, I was using a bar chart because I wanted to show percentage. So then I added two tips so that if you over around it, you can also see the numbers. So in case my audience wants to see that number, I'm providing them. Hello, Nonso. Are you there? Yeah, hello guys, just a little glitch, a little glitch, and we'll be back. I think she'll be back in a jiffy. So let's hold on.
Yeah, welcome. Okay, sorry about that. My network just went off for me. You can share a screen, you can share a screen. Yeah, apologies guys, let me just share my screen back. But can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, that's perfect. And you can hear me all right. Yeah, if you can see our screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody can. Okay. Just come in. Okay, I can. I want to change this so I can see this. Yes, that's perfect. All right. So let's start. So um, I think I was done with this part. Two tips. Uh, yes, I remember. I thought I was. We were all there. I mean, so my said answer was not in the option. So yes. So that was where I was. Coordinates will cut me off. Malcolm, are you still here? Okay, okay. Um, I think Malcolm is not here, so you can continue. Okay. And... Let's move on. Let's move on then. So moving on to the next question now. So I didn't talk about this as well because I was going to talk about it now. So I want you to answer this. What is the role of white space in dashboard design? White space should be completely eliminated to fit more data. White space helps improve readability, focus, and visual, visual appeal, or white space is only for decoration. So what do you think? I want to know what people think about this, because I don't think white space is something a lot of people know. I might be wrong. There's no data to support that. Okay, I have a lot of beads here. Yeah. Oh, welcome. I think more people have joined this live since we started. So everyone is welcome here. Yeah. My name is Chinon So Kunkwa, and yeah, that's about it. So we have B, 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 B. Why space helps improve readability, focus, and visual appeal. So apart from this, now I want to know, do you think you're using white space? I don't know if you guys have built a dashboard. So if anyone has built a dashboard or a report, have you used dashboards to improve readability, focus? Have you used dashboards? I said dashboard, sorry. Have you used white space in your dashboard? I want to hear. Okay, I did do it. I'll come to that, but I want to see if people get me. And I'll come to that, are you doing it? I see you. So the background, I guess so the background is a white space, right? So what I mean in this context is, let me wait for other people to see. Let me wait for more responses, let's see. I wish I could use something to like show you what I mean. I wish I could use something to like draw something. I'm still not good at creating the perfect presentation. Anytime I have a presentation, I'm always like, ah, I should have included this. I should have included this. There's always something. So, 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 um, let me talk about the white space now. So, in your, we all know a, maybe we don't know, but let me just, in every visualization or in every dashboard or report we are creating, we are telling a story using visuals. So, every visual has like a rectangle or a, curved rectangles shape, right? So you have, let's say you have two rectangles staying side by side. Okay, yes, that principle of space, yes. I think that is what, that's what I'm trying to talk about. So let's say you have like two rectangles starting um, closely, um, spaced closely together. 
you don't want to join them together. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. You want to create like a white space between the middle. Can, so even if there is you, a white space. Can you use an illustration? Sorry, can you use okay. an illustration? Like just go to your browser and just okay, put the gesture okay. principle so you can show us. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, let me just use this one instead. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what we see there. I mean, let me just get this. Let me just see the dashboard too. Okay, I think I have a perfect example. This is something I want to use to explain. I don't know if, let me see if there's a way I can make this clear in a way. So look at this now. What I was trying to, I hope, um, Mubar, please, can you see this? Can you see my screen? No, not yet. Not yet. Saying, like, okay, what are you seeing right browser. now? What are you seeing right now? I'm only seeing the browser. The okay, browser. I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing okay. it. I'm seeing so it. So, are you seeing an executive dashboard? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine, perfect. So, what I was trying to talk about now, when you hear white space, you automatically think maybe that's what I mean, white space by stable. It's just this space between these two. Instead of joining these two together, there's a space created. What is this? There's a space created. So even if you're not thinking about this, you can also use sometimes a line to demarcate. So even if you you have like everything is white background, you can use a line to demarcate. I think I did that in one of my reports. I'll share in the next class, right? So this is what I'm talking about. And if you notice something, if you look at these spaces between this card visual. This one here, this and this, they are all the same. Just by me looking, I can tell it. Because in Power BI, you also have distribute evenly. So you distribute this thing to be separate using the same distance. So you select everything and you distribute. So this is something also. You can see how kind of clean it looks. Everything is arranged well. And when I talked about alignment also, look at this card visual and this chart here. Look at how aligned it is to each other. So those, these are one of the things you need to focus on. They need to be aligned. If it's not aligned, like the funny thing is like, it's the tiniest thing that hurts people. Just like someone, someone will be like, oh, this tiny thing you do, that like, you don't do this, you don't, you don't show this away, you do this, that gets me annoyed. It's the tiniest thing that somebody will focus on in your dashboard instead of the insights you're trying to show to them. So you need to make sure everything is aligned properly. So let's move back. Let's move back. Let's move back. Where where was I? My slides. Let's go back to my slides. I think that covers it. So that's the rule of white space I'm seeing to help improve readability, focus, and visual appeal. Let's move on now. Let's talk about DAX. So DAX data analysis expressions. It's a powerful formula language that's built into Power BI. Now you what do you think let me go back i don't want to see but i know you've seen my slide already god what a mistake so what do you think about dax i want to know in the comment section please let me know in the chat what do you think about dax do you know dax and what do you think about it So tell me, what do you think about it? What is DAX used for? What can you use DAX for? So have you used DAX before? What do you think you can use it for, even if you have not? Or what did you use it for? Anything simple, anything big, anything small, anything. We are about 40 plus persons in this chat, so please, let's make this interactive. Okay, Damilola, that's good. I see um I see 
for measures. I see more like Excel functions in Power BI. Okay. Are we guys? <laughs> yeah, people should wake up. Oh, mobile is asking. You can't you can't be sleeping. That's the collection of functions. Okay. So now I'm asking, what do you use that for? Measures and new columns. Okay. So what are you creating these new measures and these new columns for? I want to answer. Can somebody tell me what are you creating new measures? Like things they got that right. Okay, calculated columns from Victoria that school. So what are you using these calculated columns, measures, and calculated tables for? So I'm still linking it up to what you use that for to do advanced calculation. What advanced calculation are you creating? That's it. Olive lights to get more insights on your data. To get more insights on your data for better analysis, that may not like that's good. You can only do so much with your data once you start learning DAX. Yes, to help aggregate and summarize as well. The Zane app, that's good. So, this is what DAX is. So, it's not about you need to create measures and columns. Oh, well, but what are they doing for you? Why are you? Why do we need to create another column in this data that I already have? Because I want to get more insights. Because I want to perform better analysis. Because I want to aggregate or summarize my data. Clear presentation as well. Good metrics. Because I want to get more metrics on my data. Are you doing quite good? All right. So I'll take you back to my DAX slide. It works with data models to review trends and insights to show some hidden information. Yes, definitely, hidden information. There's some hidden information around you. Do some calculations. That's where you get your answers. So quite good, Matthew. So let's let's move on. Let's move on to the slide now. Moving on to the slides. Okay, now DAX. So I I would like to correct one impression I had from someone. Someone said something about like, it's like a Excel function in Power BI. So yes, that is correct in a way, but it's also a little bit misleading in a way because while Excel is working on row by row basis, DAX does not work like that. Like Power BI is not, it's focused on columns. It doesn't really do that row by row. Like you can't reference a, no, let me say cell. Excel lives on cell referencing, but Power BI doesn't do cell referencing. So while Excel has functions to perform things, DAX is also used to perform calculations in Power BI. So I get that comparison that you were trying to make, but we should not get it totally wrong though. So let's move on now. DAX allows you to perform complex calculations and aggregations on your data, enabling you to extract insights that you might not be able to get with simple tabular data. So, you can have a data set, but not enough information in that data set. But it's just like, let me bring it like mass. They will never ask you to find X or Y if you don't have all the things you need to find that X and Y. So in that, you will never need to find something if you don't have what you can use to find it. So let's talk about revenue. You cannot find revenue a business is making if you don't know how many quantity they are selling per day. We don't know how many quantity they sold on a daily basis today, tomorrow, next tomorrow. If you don't know the unit price of each product they sold. So you need to have those data to provide you with more data. So that is going to help you to perform these calculations. This month over month and year over year I mentioned, what are we going to use to actually create those measures, DAX? So some common DAX functions you have like some X. So some X is looking like I'm seeing some and I'm seeing X. Why the X? You know, some just works for summing. You know, some is just add. Why am I saying summing? <laughs> some is just add. You want to add up values, sum them up. Now, what does this X do? This X is called, this X makes some an iterating function where you get some X. So what do I mean by iterating function or iterative function? A function that is going to go row over row. Let me see if I can 
Okay, Let, let's just move on. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. Not much time, not much time. So you can use DAX to calculate revenue, churn rates, and many more. By leveraging the power of DAX, you can gain a deeper understanding of your data. So I know that there's a lot of like talks about how DAX is not easy and everything. And to be fair and to be honest, there is nothing that comes there's nothing that is easy. Everything takes everything takes work and practice, and you get it. See, what may I say? Anytime you see something that people say is quite challenging, I don't think you should look down and be like, "Oh, it's not challenging." But I don't, I don't also think you should take it as I will never be good at it, or no, it's going to be tasking for me. Like, just give it a go. So once it comes to DAX, I want if there's any mindset you had previously about DAX. You should just let it go. The people that are using that, the people that learned it, the people that are writing measures, they probably had no knowledge of it. I had no knowledge of it before. I learned that the period I went back to write that school, it was like I was blank. I had to go back again and learn again. Like, so it's going to be practice. It's going to be practice. And maybe there will be like a challenge for you to like practice your dash. So moving on. So why am I talking about DAX now? We're talking about building DAX shows, I tell you, insightful stories, and me, no, so I've gone to go and carry DAX and bring DAX into this whole thing. Because you can only build DAX shows that tell insightful stories if you, if you uncover those insights yourself. And that's where DAX comes in. So I'm not saying you can't uncover. Your data sometimes might be very rich enough that it will fulfill your requirements, and you might need to write only little DAX or even no DAX sometimes. Whereas, for so instance, now you're working with a survey, you're working with a survey data mostly. How many DAX do you need to write? Except you have numerical columns, you want to calculate like the average or maybe let's say revenue or something, or like how many DAX do you need to write there? You get. So, you, but one thing I want you to know is that learning DAX is going to help you uncover insights from your data stream. So I want to know if, do you feel, <laughs> Let, okay, I think you, you get what DAX is used for. I think you get the calculated columns, calculated measures, and, okay, I don't think anybody mentioned rule level security though. I don't think anybody mentioned rule level security. Um, I think, Let's, let's see. Okay, let's just move on. Let's move on. So, this is not about DAX. This is about what we are going to do, right? So, I want us to use two tips. Talk about two tips. I want us to talk about bookmarks. And I want us to use DAX to uncover insights in our answer. And I want us to know how to present our insights better. So, this is some of my some of like my goals for this class, some of my objectives in this class. I want us to know how to use bookmarks. I want us to know how to um, create some charts, format our charts to be more insightful, provide context, and use DAX to uncover more insights from our data. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. But first off, I'm going to go to Power BI. Let's go to Power BI now. Or before I head to Power BI, I would just want to ask first to cover up something quick. If, based on what I've said about so far, if there is anything you need me to maybe talk about a little bit more, explain a little bit more, or, or if there's any topic, if there's something, right? That can be used in conditional formatting and then, yes, definitely, definitely, messy. Definitely. Evaluation context, yes, yes. Talk about context transitions where you use calculate function to, it can also, okay, it can also be using renaming columns, right, right. So I've been explaining things, I've just been talking and talking, basically. So is there anything that I've explained on that you feel I you need me to talk about it a little bit more or something. I don't know. Yeah, actually there will be there will be time for question. 
I think that will be maybe 10 minutes before the class ends. So everybody can put in their question before the way you can continue for now. So. Okay, 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 okay. Let's move on then. Since there's nothing in the chat box, let's move on. Right. Yeah, we still have like 30 minutes for the class. Don't worry, we still have so like nice. we are going to cover this um data, this insightful dashboard. We're going to cover it. I have a plan. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, let's go. So there's something I want to start with. So I have two plans actually, but let's see what we can do today first. So I want to work with this and I want to work with the I want to work with another data set as well. So this is just a simple data set. I want to show you what you can do with it. So let's go through this really quick. Apologies for the time. Crayberry is the new. Let me make this bold. I just think I didn't think about the fact that it's not be clear. Let's make this bold. Yes, I think this is better. Ah, what is this one? What did I just do? Okay. So let's work with this. Crayberry is the new Yugos product that your field manufacturing employer is preparing to launch. The product team on which you work decided to do an additional round of taste testing to get to get a final gauge of customer sentiment before going to market with the product. You've worked with your teams to analyze the results. You're getting ready to meet the head of products to discuss whether to potentially make changes before going to market. Your colleague puts together the following visuals summarizing the test test results and asks for your feedback. So this is about a test test, a test test analysis done. So we can see um, there are three criteria basically, not enough, just about right and too much. Thickness, not enough, just about right, too much. Creaminess, sweetness, amount of fruit used in it, amount of yogurt and size. So we, we get here with, I need help with answering these questions. Who is your primary audience? What are the primary takeaways that you want to communicate with them? How would that best be achieved? Then in light of your assumptions, in what feedback would you give to your colleague on the visual they shared? So this is the visual they shared to you, right? Uh, where, is, where, where are we? I think I'm moving a bit. I might be even make, making everything disorganized, but let's move along. What feedback would you give your colleague on the visual they shared? Outline your thoughts, focusing not just on what you would recommend changing, but also why. So create an effective chart. Once you create a draft version of the chart, apply three steps to improve the chart. Remove clutters, minimize eye movement, and add visual cues by utilizing pre-attentive attributes. Add story. Adding story mentioned above, what does this mean? It means that you need to include the following, context, finding, interpretation, and answers on, so what question, so what with your data. So this is what we have here now. So what I'm going to do is try to go through this in about, I'm going to do this in 10 minutes. Okay, let's just try this. So let's get Power BI next up. We're still going to come back to this slide. So we're going to come back to this um, drive if you need clarifications or anything like, you're going to be looking at the brief. So oh, let's wait while Fabia comes on. Okay, so I wanted to do, where is it? Let me come up. I wanted to do an announcement on my YouTube page about this mobile view being here in the layout now. You know, it was quite, yeah, view, mobile layout. But now Fabia has introduced it here. I don't know if anybody's seen this. So now you have not just a yeah. desktop view, you have your mobile view right here. That's like uh, I noticed it this afternoon so like yeah. the, I think that's these um August updates. Well they just released another August update before this one. I don't know. I don't know. If I think about it, I've been getting errors using Power BI lately. So I'm wondering maybe it's all the updates they are working on. Like I'll just be getting some maybe web U2 or some other errors like that. I don't even know. So I don't know, they should just not be messing things too much as they are putting the updates. So 
I've been talking too much now, so let's get data. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be getting data from this brief that my colleague shared with me. So this brief I just read to you is a PDF. So we're going to get data from that PDF. Right, so I'm going to go to my own tab, get data, then let's go to more. If I'm too fast, talk about it in the chat so I can pull back because we can't really go back if I've already passed certain stages to get. So now I'm going to go to PDF and I'll connect. So while that's loading, I'll just go to my downloads. Should be my downloads. Yes, I'm going to open this. So I wanted to even get, um, I think I included the data source in this PDF, so you see it. So I wanted to get it like from the web initially, but it's like that website, they have like a blocking or something you can't get from there. You can't just get from that website. So we are just going to have to do this instead. So I'm going to select the table. Now, one thing probably I do in every PDF, as long as there's a table format, it's automatically detect that. So you can see it as a table. So you can see this, which is the full data here. But this is not what I want. This is what I want. I can see the preview and I can just take this and let's load that. There's not much transformation needed or even any. So I'm going to load that. We don't have that much time to cover this. This needs to load. Okay, shouldn't even have taken that long. My system is. Okay, so now we have our data loaded in, right? So majorly, now it comes to what do we want to use to visualize our data? What chart type are we? What chart type are we supposed to use right now, right? So usually, when it comes to survey data. A data set that includes where you talk about um, very poor to like very good, where there are different ranges. I think to want to use something that can show like maybe a sequence. So I always go for my stacked bar charts and I always like to go for the 100%. So it's showing me like the full. So if you come here, you can see you have stacked column charts. Yeah. You also have another one here, but you can see this too. They are not equal. So this one is not the 100%. So this is the 100% stacked bar chart, which I'll be going for. So I would go for this one, the horizontal, right? So I'll go for the horizontal, right? And I'm going to pick my first column and I'll place that in my y-axis. And I'll pick my first column. So I want to start with not enough, which is like worse to me. Then just about right. Then too much. So I feel like this data set makes everything easy because everything is just like I'm just dragging and dropping. So tomorrow we'll delve into something that would show you how something that's like easier can take you another, can take you like another route to get there. So if you can see something now, this visual now, what do, how does it look like? Some of not enough, some of just about, it should not even be some, but this is still developed for the column, the contest data, since it's still developed for the column, it still works. So now you can see what does this chart look like now? You're seeing some of not enough, some of just about right, some of too much, the title, the um, legend, the axis, like, there is, when someone sees this data now, they're looking at this, looking at even the color. Like, which color am I supposed to focus on? There's blue, there's orange, there's, all of these colors are really, really bright colors. And they don't really convey anything to me. Let's go back to our brief, shall we? You got the product team on which you work decided to do an additional round of testing. You are getting ready to meet the head of product 
to discuss whether to potentially make changes before going to youth market. So this is the line I want to um, strike, strike the nail upon, right? So who is your primary audience now? The head of the product team. The head of the product team is your audience. They did a test test analysis. It's the one in charge of this product. It's the one in charge of how do they make the product thick, creamy, sweet, the amount of fruits they put, the amount of yogurt. So it's the one you're targeting with your analysis. What are the primary takeaways that you want to communicate with them? That is what your chat will do, right? And we're creating like a report, just like a one page, just like a dashboard. So in light of your assumptions in A, what feedback would you give your colleague on the visual they shared? So looking at this visual they shared, we're going to create something better. So because this visual is not really going to, if you look at this visual, you're already trying to like, oh, you're going from left to right to be thickness to 350. You are even trying to pick which one is I. Your, your brain is trying to do the math, which is dark skin enough. Like why, why not the easy way? Why should we always suffer? Must be so far. We already so far in Nigeria enough. Why should we so far with that data? So let's go back to this. And we should keep note that we have to remove clutter, minimize eye movements, and add to it. So our audience now is what our head of product team. I want to communicate with them is what is this data telling us about the product? What should they include? What should they remove? What should they do relating to the product based on what people are saying, based on the test text, the test test analysis rather. So let's go back to Power BI. So now what I want to do is change this data a bit. So first of all, let's add data labels so you can see what this data is telling us first of all. Let's turn on data labels. So ignore the fact because I don't think We'll be seeing this so let me first increase the size so let's talk about the values the values divided values 18. let's talk about the x axis values let me that 15. right let's talk about the data labels let's make that also 15. so that we can see so that you guys can see that well i don't know i hope it's clear enough maybe i can zoom more I don't want everything out. Okay, let's close this filter pane. We don't need it. We don't need it. I don't think I even be needing this. So let's close this. Create more space for us to see. Right. So one thing you can see here is not enough, just about right, and some of too much. Not enough, just about right, too much. So this thing now, this issue now is already ranked. So if it wasn't ranked, then I need to rank it now. You can see it's ranked in the order of what not enough. So which which um, metric is not enough? The amount of you got. So about half, half, which is like one in two persons, 50% is saying the amount of you got is not enough. I think that is something that is a, should I call it the do or die? That's something that is quite important now. So what I'm looking at majorly is the not enough and the too much. Just about right it does not really matter to me because you're saying what? It's good. Do you get? So sum of too much is what I'm looking at also. So once I come to sum of too much now, what do I see here? I see thickness now, 55%. I see what also? Amount of fruit, 50%. So people are saying the thickness of our product is too much, about one in two persons. And Amount of fruit is also too much. So these are already looking at this. This is like me exploring this data. These are the these are the things I'm picking from it. Amount of yogurt is not enough. Thickness is too much. Amount of fruit is too much. Like what is the numbers? I can see the numbers: 50%, 50 percent, fifty, fifty-five percent. So now, what can I do to pass this information along to? my audience now what i can do here is to first off i'll start by turning off this so let's change the title let's come to our visualizations okay visualizations come to this your format your visual you select format your visual right so i don't know if i explained oh god this is visualizations i should take you guys through power bi very well so this is your reports this is your report view that we're in so this in report view, what you're going to use basically is, okay, I can still take it to this tomorrow, but let's just go to it. In your report view, what you're going to use is 
you're going to have your view tab where you can select your teams. You can change your colors here. You have your page view or you can decide how you want your page to be, fit to page or fit to it. You have this mobile layout, which is what I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it was here initially. Now they brought it here, which makes it easier as well. So closing that, I'm going back to our home tab, right? So this is what you call your visualizations pane. Visualizations pane. Yeah, you have different charts, and this is where I selected this chart from. So if you want to, I might be going a bit too fast because I'm trying to keep up. Okay. So if you want to, um, but if there's any confusion in the charts, just draw my attention. So if you want to format this chart, now give it a title, which is our text test results. You come to format your visual here, yeah? select, go to general and title. So I'm going to change this title now to test test results. And then I can change this to maybe 20 and change this to say UI. It doesn't matter. The font is your very good kids if it's your choice. Right. So now with that, next thing I want to do is this um this um legend. Now I don't really like the way this legend is. You come and you see this legend file. I want the legend to be directly this. So what I usually do myself is um I play around with power bi a lot. So I play around with Power BI a lot, so I can just go to insert and insert the text box to do things I want it to do for me. So now I'm going to increase. So this is the text box. Now I'm going to increase the size because it's always small. Let me just increase it to like 18 first. And then I'm going to write this my metric, which is not enough. I'm creating my own legend. Just about right. And then too much. So I'm leaving everything as in dark first, just for now. I'm going to reduce this and reduce this. And still in my format pane, which is the visualization pane, I'll go to effect and I'm going to increase the transparency. So I don't think you see what that transparency did. So let me show you. I'll drag this visual. So if you want to drag your visual, you see these three icons here. That's how you can move your visual around. You have to be like this and it shows your thumb. So you see, it shows like a thumb kind of stuff and you can move it. But if it's not showing that, I can't really move it. So I need to be here at these three icons and move it about where I want it to be. Now you can see it's white. So once I come to this transparency and I include this, it's not going to, it's because the background is not gray. If the background was gray, you'd be able to see it. So let's make that gray as well. So you can see the contrast. So I've selected my canvas and I'm going to format pane. I'll go to canvas background and reduce transparency. Go to the color and choose a gray color. No, this is too much. I always choose the lighter one. I always choose the lighter one. So now you can see this already as transparent as it is. There's no background because I removed the transparency. Let me show you how it was before. Again, effects, I take this back light then i take this back then it's transparent so you can fit in any background i place it open then i'm going to go to my format and i'll bring it to front so it's still selected then i'll bring it to front i don't want it to be lost behind this visual so i'll bring it to front or bring it forward so i just say bring it to front so it's going to stay right on the visual so i'm going to turn off i'm still going to reduce the size of this it's a bit too big so i'll turn off this legend now i don't need it i want people to be able to read this thing directly on it's like so it's very very easy for them so i'm going to go to my data okay let me show you how i did that select your visual go to your format pane format your visual then you go to where where you have your legend scroll down until you see your legend which is it then you turn it off right so you see exactly why i said i was going to move that so i'm going to move this right a bit so the balance is just enough so are you seeing how it looks a bit, it's coming along. So next thing I'm going to turn off this and turn off this. So let's go to our format ratio. Let's turn off the Y axis title. So this is Y axis. The title should be underneath it, turn off the title. X axis title, let's scroll down to our X axis, turn it on. You need to tap on this icon here for it to come down. Like, 
then you scroll down and you turn off the title as well. So I'm turning off the title, not the value. So it's just the subtitles that are gone. So are you seeing how it looks a bit better? Well, oh, I should have done it before and after. Well, doesn't matter. Let's move on. So now I don't want too much. Look at this label now showing um, decimal place. This is my data label, decimal place, decimal place. I'd like to just change it quickly. So I'll wrap up in like, let's wrap up in like two minutes. Let's wrap up this visual in two, three minutes. So I'll go to my data labels and change the decimal points to, so I'm in my data labels. I'll go to values, because these are values. And I'll go to value decimal places and change that to zero from automatic. So that's how it changes. So once that's changed, I can decide to turn off my X as this label because I still have this here, right? So the next thing I want to do is, Focus on this amount of yogurt. I want to push everything to the background first. So how do you push everything to the background? Like I mentioned, you use your gray colors. So before you do anything, you have to select your visual. Come here to your format, your visual. Go to your bars. So I'm scrolling down to bars, right? We have our bars now. I'm going to select some of not enough. I'll pick a color. Some of just about right. I'll pick another color. And some of just too much, I'll pick. Another color. So this is just how. Then I will now. So this is me pushing everything to the background. Then I'll now decide which one I want to focus on. Right. So seeing as I want to tell this this test result, I want to focus on this amount of yogurt. I want to focus on the not enough part. I can decide to use a color for that. So I'm coming back to my bars and changing that color now. So let's see, let's see. Should I use this color? Okay, that works. There's some of too much. I can just change that to be deep. But this is a bit too deep. It's so dry, but it works as well. But I don't know, it's a bit of, it's too deep for me. I'll change this one to something lighter. Yes. So I'll just change this to this. So we're changing that to something lighter. One thing it does now is makes our data labels in this part not readable, but that is not really the goal of this. So now I'm also going to change my not enough using the same color. So, so people are automatically associate not enough with this part. So that's where color comes into place here. So I'm going to select the same color I used, just about right, select that same gray color. And we'll probably just end this year. And let me, I should take questions in the last five minutes. Probably should take questions. Too much, too much, too much, too much. Let's pick this. So you see how it's coming along. So this is the test test result. So there's still a lot of numbers to focus on. One thing we can do is decide to push back, like maybe not show this particular, um, this just about right data point. So I can mess around with it in our data labels. But let's just let's just leave that and go back to our this thing. So I want to show you like if you look about this, if you look at this chart now here yeah, and you look at this visual, and there are two things you can see. You can see something from this visual showing you that about 50% saying the amount of you got is not enough. And then it's very thick. So these are some of the recommendations we should take. So if they want to do this, I think they should reduce the thickness. Because people don't, people are claiming it's too thick. So they should remove the, um, reduce the amount of fruit for it. And then they should increase the amount of yogurt a bit. People like sweet things. They should increase the amount of yogurt in it. So these are some of the recommendations we'd like to include in a textual format if you're not going to be live there presenting it. Also, even if you're going to be live, you can include it just in, within a sentence, a line sentence. So let's go with this. So we've identified our primary audience, the product, the head of product. Um, what feedback would you give your colleague on the visual they shared? There's not in enough insight to be gotten from this. You need to think your head. You need to try to understand this. You think too much to understand this. Okay, applying your thoughts, focusing not just what you recommend changeable. Why? I recommend him using this chart because it will help them to focus on what matters, which is 
the yogurt and the thickness of the um, the thickness of our product, which people are complaining is too thick, so they should reduce the amount of fruit. Also, once you create a draft version of the chart, apply three steps to remove the chart, remove clutters, which we did, minimize eye movement and add visual cues, right? We're able to add preattentive attributes. Preattentive attributes here is about you can look at this not enough with the, the color here, with this color here, and associate it right about. Then also, you might be wondering if I move this visual about, it's going to move. So I'll select this, control, select this chart, and then go to format, group, and then I'll group this as one element. So if I'm moving it, they will move together as one. So this is now one chart. So it's now one chart. So that's pretty cool. So let's go back to this. So I think that's adding the stories about just talking about more things we can talk about, writing the writing our insight down, which you can't do for the sake of time. So that covers about it, right? Let's go back to this. I think I covered, I think I might have closed something. All right, so that about covers it. So one thing you should remember is numbers have an important story to tell and they rely on you to give them a clear and convincing voice, right? So we'll take our questions now. We have less than three minutes, I think. Apologies, took a lot of time. So take our questions now. If there's any questions, let me know. Yeah, so if you have questions, please kindly drop it in the chat. Um, you can request for Mike if you... All right. Okay, I'm seeing something. Please, would the resource be shared to us? Yes, I will. I'll send that to um, Mobile. Mobile will send it across. So if there's question, please kindly drop it. So if there's any questions, we're about to round up. So you might want to ask in now, so we can all okay. go along. Matthew, uh, the question. So you can speak, Matthew. OK, go ahead. Uh, well, good evening, Miss Mba and Mrs. Chinozo. Uh -huh. I'm not Miss Abby. Sorry, Mr. Miss Mr. Miss. Please, it's Miss. It's Miss. Miss, yeah, I'm Miss. M I S S. Please. Thank you. Go ahead. I hope this can continue. And I think Mrs. Tina is in the house, but we she she just hid. And thanks a lot. God bless you. Wow. I enjoyed the class so much. All right. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank that was great. So. I'm seeing thank you. Ah, Sulia is talking now. My boss is talking. Sulia, thank you for uh, your nice words. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> so I think there is no question. Everybody really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed right. the class, don't forget on your page, your social page, tag her. Uh, I do is not so, not so analytics. analytics. So these are not so, not so, so analytics. So you guys learn from my for my mentor today. So it's a great pleasure learning from my mentor. So she's my <laughs> you guys about. made it very, very insightful. Thank you for the feedback and everything. And I just I just like the fact that people are engaging. 